This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to answer the question, could someone else accidentally pick your Bitcoin seed? This is a question from Zach and also from Bitcoin Clown. This may be a dumb question, so please feel free to throw eggs in my face. But if 24 words are your unique wallet or seed, then how does the generator know not to accidentally generate the same words twice? This is actually not a dumb question. This is a very good question. Just a little background, your seed, your recovery seed, it's usually 12 or 24 words in a particular order that's used to back up a Bitcoin wallet. This would be an example right here of a 12 word seed or recovery seed. Warning, do not use this seed. Any Bitcoin sent to any address associated with this seed will be immediately stolen by bots. This is why it's very important to keep your own recovery seed or seed private and never upload it online as I just did. These 12 or 24 words are taken from this English word list which contains 2,048 different words. Your seed is sometimes also called a seed backup, recovery seed, mnemonic, mnemonic phrase, seed phrase, recovery seed. I'm going to start using the word seed. I really like it. And after watching this video, you're going to know why it's a pretty good summary. So how's a Bitcoin seed generated? Basically, your software wallet or hardware wallet contains a built-in what's called a true random number generator, TRNG. And that TRNG generates a random 128-bit number for a 12-word seed. It would look like this. It's basically 128 zeros and ones in a row. And if you wanted a 24-word seed, it would generate a random 256-bit number. That's 256 zeros and ones in a row. It's very important not to generate these yourself. If you just write down zeros and ones, the chances are it's not going to be random enough. You can use an online generator, but you've got to be very careful. These might not be trustworthy, but if you just Google this, I'll put a link in the description notes below. This, for example, will allow you to generate a 256 or 128-bit random number, so you can get a feel for how it works. Now, once you have this large binary number, it's basically mapped onto that BIP39 word list, including some fancy magic called the checksum for the 12th word or for the 24th word. But remember basically this, your seed is really just a very large binary number as we've seen here. Bitcoin doesn't have accounts. It doesn't have customer support. There's no one in charge. There's no one distributing and keeping track of Bitcoin seeds. Bitcoin is just math. It's just math. It's just physics. And so if you want to ban Bitcoin, you need to figure out a way to ban math. And this is why I always laugh when people like Elizabeth Warren talk about banning unhosted wallets, for example, or the EU talks about banning unhosted wallets. What they're talking about is banning generating large binary numbers like this, which is just absurd. You could also generate this large binary number with dice by rolling dice, but you need to roll hundreds of times and also make sure that you're using perfectly weighted casino dice. If you're going to do it this way, for example, if the die landed on one, two, or three, you could write down a zero. If it landed on four, five, or six, you could write down a one. And after you did this 128 times or 256 times, you would have your random binary number. The other way of doing it, of course, is to flip a perfectly weighted coin. And if it's heads, you put down zero. If it's tails, you put down one or vice versa. I'd be very careful, though, using either of these methods. Most people will be much better off buying a legitimate hardware wallet, like a Blockstream Jade or a cold card, and then letting it generate the randomness for them. But whatever you do, as I mentioned before, do not just pick words randomly from this BIP39 list. Do not do that. Your randomness is not true randomness. The human brain is very bad at generating true randomness. Also, don't use a common phrase or Bible verse made up of words from the BIP39 list. This is a mistake that sometimes people make. They'll have a favorite phrase or proverb or, or a verse from the Bible, and they'll go through here and take the words and make it. These are all being monitored by bots online, so you want to be very careful and not do it that way. So whatever you do, do not attempt to pick your own 12 or 24 words. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd ask you please subscribe, like, comment, leave a question, suggestion for a future topic, and share this video with a friend or family member. But subscribing is also a way of really helping out this channel. And I want to apologize as well for my voice today. I'm very hoarse. I seem to be fighting another bug. So the question, the answer to this question from Bitcoin Clown, what are the odds? How does the generator know not to accidentally generate the same seed words twice? Basically, as we've discussed, a random number generator doesn't know anything. It's just a random number generator. All it does is it just generates very large random numbers. And the probability of someone else, another true random number generator, 
picking the same 24 words in the same order would be 1 in 248 to the 24th power because you're picking 24 words and there are 2,048 words in that BIP39 dictionary. This is equivalent, uh, if you translate this into uh, uh, an exponential form using base 10, it'd be 296 times 10 to the 79th, or if you want to do it in binary, it's 2 to the 264th. The actual probability is slightly less than this because the 24th word, the checksum, or the, the 12th word, the checksum is somewhat dependent on the previous 23 words or 11 words. So the actual probability for a 24, uh, 24 rec word recovery seed would be 1 in 2 to the 256. In other words, what's called 256-bit entropy. This is on the order of 10 to the 77th. And to put that in perspective, it's estimated that there's somewhere between 10 to the 78th to 10 to the 82nd atoms in the known observable universe. So this is just one order of magnitude away from the lower bound of that. And so if you think you can guess the same atom in the same in the in the known observable universe, then you should be worried about this sort of thing. Will a true random number generator pick the same seed for someone else that another random generator random number generator picked for you? Yes, it's of course theoretically possible, but here's a much more likely scenario that you should be much more worried about. While lying in bed one night, your house is robbed, while you have a heart attack at the same time, while lightning strikes you in your bed, and a giant meteorite hits your house. This is a much higher probability than someone picking the same recovery seed. So if this scenario doesn't keep you awake at night, then neither should worrying about someone generating the same 12 or 24 word seed. This is another way of estimating probabilities. These are the odds of dying in the US from selected causes over a complete human lifetime. The chances of dying in an asteroid or comet impact, a regional impact would be one in 1 1.6 million, shark attack one in eight million. But if we just translate this asteroid impact into scientific notation, that's the same as 1.6 times 10 to the 6th, and we can see before we were talking about 10 to the 79th or 10 to the 80th. And so this is a much, it's much more common, it's much more likely that you're going to die in an asteroid or comet accident than have your same seed picked. Now if we talk about 12 word seeds, that's equivalent to 128 bits of entropy. In other words, the chances of picking the same 12 word seed are 1 in 2 to the 128th or approximately 3.4 times 10 to the 38th. The other one was 10 to the 79th for a 24 word seed. To put this in perspective, there are approximately 10 to the 18th grains of sand on earth and there are 10 to the 27th atoms in the average human body. And the odds of this are 10 to the 38th picking the same 12 word seed. So again, this is not something to worry about. And if you're trying to decide between 12 words or 24 words for your seed, 12 word seeds are good enough. And you don't have to trust me. You can listen to Adam Back about this. Adam Back was someone that Satoshi drew on when designing Bitcoin. He drew, Satoshi drew on Adam Back's hash cash invention. Adam Back says 12 words is enough. Putting aside skepticism about quantum supercomputers relevant to 256-bit ECDL crypto anytime soon, the point is 256-bit EC. DSA itself is 128-bit secure. This is the signature algorithm, one of the signature algorithms for Bitcoin. So itself, the signature algorithm only has 128 bits. And so if you're using a 24-word recovery seed, that's going to be 256 bits. And it's actually going to have more entropy than the signature algorithm itself. The response to Adam's tweet, someone said 24 is more secure. Adam says, that's the thing. It's not ECDSA. And then Schnorr signatures, which are the taproot upgraded version of signatures for Bitcoin, are themselves 128 bits secure. And you're more likely to make a mistake with 24 words. So when you're generating these 12 word, a 12 word seed is good enough. If you want to read more about these different signature algorithms, I will link to this article on ECDSA and Schnorr signatures as well. I wanted to conclude by just talking about why it is called a seed or recovery seed. It's obviously a recovery seed because you can use it to recover your, your wallet, but it's called a seed because you can use the seed to grow a whole tree of Bitcoin addresses 
and your entire transaction history for those Bitcoin addresses. And the really cool thing is it's always the same tree from the same seed, from the same 12 word seed or 24 word seed. If you enter your seed into any software or hardware wallet that is BIP39 compatible, and most modern ones are, it will always produce the same result. Warning, never enter your seed online or into a software wallet, a hot wallet, a wallet that's connected to the internet. If it is storing a lot of funds, you wanna use something that's not connected to the internet, like a hardware wallet that keeps your private keys offline. So you should only enter your key, your seed directly into the screen of a hardware wallet like the Blockstream Jade or the cold card. And this is how you keep your private keys from ever touching the internet. Because when you sign a Bitcoin transaction, it's put into the hardware wallet. It's signed by the hardware wallet and then sent back onto the internet. And this is how a hardware wallet will help you sign Bitcoin transactions while not disclosing your keys or putting them online even temporarily as could happen with a software or hot wallet. These modern wallets are called HD wallets. You may have heard this term. It stands for hierarchical deterministic wallet. The term wallet itself is self-explanatory. It's a collection of public keys and Bitcoin addresses with their, their corresponding private keys that can be used to sign transactions. Deterministic because the same seed always produces the same derived public private key pairs and Bitcoin addresses. In other words, the same seed always produces the same tree hierarchical because the seed is used to drive a master key which can then be used to drive child keys and those child keys can have their own children keys so that's the meaning of hd wallets and it looks something like this i'll put a link to this in the description notes below as well as this article about hierarchical deterministic wallets a final note never do seed splitting this is a really bad idea that some of you have asked me about in a seed splitting example, if you have a 12 word seed, for example, you would store six words at home and then six words in a different location in a different part of your house or at a bank or in a different, maybe at a friend's house or something like this. The problem with this is if anyone finds one of those six word lists, so you have 12 words, you split into two, you have two six word lists. If anyone finds one of those six word lists, it's extremely easy or it's at least much easier to brute force. In other words, to guess through trial and error the remaining six words. It's not just half as easy. It's much, much, much easier. So if you want to do this, I would say consider using multi-sig instead, where, for example, you have geographically distributed keys. And in a two of three multi-sig, for example, you would need two signatures in order to move your Bitcoin. You need to sign with two out of three, two out of those three uh, keys. If you want to look into multi-sig, there's a very easy collaborative custody solution. Unchained, Unchained Capital offers this. I'll put a link in the description notes below. And if you want to do it yourself and build your own version of an Unchained Vault, a multi-sig vault, I'm very proud of this solution. I call it the ultimate Bitcoin storage solution. Do it yourself, multi-vendor, multi-sig, where you use hardware wallets from different manufacturers and you basically build your own multi-sig vault at home. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out. I'll put a link to my paid course in the description notes below. If you want to do it the easy way though, definitely check it, check out Unchained. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.